Imagine waking up and feeling that low, steady electricity already moving through your body before your feet even touch the floor. Not caffeine energy. Not hype. Real energy. The kind that makes your mind feel sharp and your body feel ready. Like the day is something you step into, not something you survive. You're alert without trying. Focused without forcing it. There's an edge there. A quiet confidence. A sense that you could handle whatever shows up. Most men remember that feeling. Maybe from their early 20s. Maybe from a short window in their 30s. And then, slowly, without any single dramatic moment, it faded. Mornings started feeling heavier. Your thoughts took longer to line up. By mid-afternoon, you're reaching for coffee, sugar, anything to stay functional. You still show up. You still do what needs to be done. But something is missing. You look in the mirror, and you don't see weakness. You see confusion. You wonder where that version of you went. And here's the part nobody says out loud. This isn't about motivation. It isn't about discipline. And it's not because you suddenly got lazy. This is biology. What if the way you've been living, eating, and fueling your body every single day is quietly shutting down the systems that used to make you feel powerful in the first place? Because once you understand that, everything you thought you knew about energy, testosterone, and male hormones starts to change. At first, it doesn't feel like something is wrong. It just feels normal. You tell yourself, this is what adulthood looks like. Long days, constant pressure. A body that needs a little more maintenance than it used to. Everyone's tired, right? So you adapt. You push through. You stack caffeine on top of sleep deprivation. You snack between meals because that's what you've been told keeps your energy stable. And when your focus dips or your drive feels muted, you assume it's stress or age or just life doing what life does. But here's the uncomfortable truth. Feeling foggy, flat, and dependent on stimulation didn't become normal because it's healthy. It became normal because it's common. We built an environment where men are almost never truly rested, never metabolically quiet, and never allowed to feel hunger without immediately shutting it down. Food is always available. Screens are always on. Dopamine is always dripping into the system. And when your body is constantly fed and constantly stimulated, it never gets a chance to reset. Hormones don't recover. Signals don't clear. Everything stays slightly elevated, slightly inflamed, slightly off. You're not failing to keep up. Your system is overloaded. Once you see that this state didn't appear overnight, it opens the door to a more dangerous question. What if the advice meant to keep you energized is the very thing keeping you stuck? From the outside, it all sounds responsible. Eat breakfast, don't skip meals, keep your blood sugar stable. Fuel your body every few hours so your metabolism doesn't slow down. This advice is everywhere, fitness magazines, doctor's offices, social media feeds repeated so often it feels unquestionable. And most men follow it faithfully, assuming consistency equals health. But here's the problem. This advice was never designed for a world where food is constant, stress is chronic, and stimulation never shuts off. When you eat from the moment you wake up until late at night, your body never experiences silence. Metabolically, it's always processing, always responding, always reacting. There is no pause, no reset, no chance for your internal signals to recalibrate. Instead of creating stable energy, constant fueling often creates dependence. You're not energized, you're managed. You're borrowing focus from the next snack, the next coffee, the next hit of quick fuel. And over time, that steady stream of input stops supporting your system and starts drowning it. The engine isn't starved. It's flooded. Once that idea lands, a new question becomes impossible to ignore. What happens inside your body when the signal to stop eating never arrives? When most people hear the word insulin, they think fat storage or diabetes, something extreme, something that happens to other people. But insulin's real power has nothing to do with extremes. It's about what happens when insulin never gets a chance to come down. Every time you eat, insulin rises. That's normal. That's healthy. The problem starts when meals stack on top of snacks, snacks stack on top of drinks, and your bloodstream never experiences quiet. Insulin stays elevated. 
hour after hour, like a constant background hum. And that hum matters, because insulin doesn't just move nutrients, it controls the entire hormonal conversation in your body. Your brain sends signals to your testes through a delicate chain of communication. Produce, repair, maintain drive, maintain strength. But chronically elevated insulin interferes with that process. It acts like a gatekeeper that never steps aside. The message doesn't land. The signal weakens. Testosterone production doesn't crash dramatically, it just fades. Slowly. Quietly. This is why so many men lift heavy, supplement aggressively, and still feel flat. The problem isn't effort, it's signal interference. And here's an important line to draw. This isn't about starving yourself or fearing food. It's about restoring rhythm. Because without rhythm, even the strongest system starts to malfunction. And when men finally try to restore that rhythm, this is where things get uncomfortable. This is the point where most men walk away. They shorten their eating window, skip a meal, or experiment with fasting, and within days everything feels worse. Energy tanks, muscles look flatter, mood dips, libido goes quiet, and the immediate conclusion is obvious, I'm wrecking my hormones. So they stop, they go back to eating every few hours, relieved that the discomfort fades, convinced they just proved fasting doesn't work for them. But that conclusion misses what's actually happening. When you suddenly remove constant fuel, your body doesn't interpret that as optimization. It interprets it as uncertainty. From a biological standpoint, food disappearing looks like danger. And when danger appears, your nervous system does exactly what it was designed to do. It prioritizes survival. Your adrenal glands push out cortisol. Alertness rises. Restlessness creeps in. Testosterone temporarily steps back. Not because something is broken, but because your body is choosing between reproduction and survival. Survival always wins in the short term. This is not failure. This is the stress gap, the transition phase where the old signals shut down before the new ones come online. Almost everyone who quits does it here, right before the shift. They confuse adaptation with damage, and that misunderstanding keeps them trapped in the very cycle they're trying to escape. Here's what makes this phase so misunderstood. We've been taught to see cortisol as the enemy, a stress hormone to be eliminated at all costs. But cortisol isn't malicious, it's ancient. It's part of the same survival software that kept your ancestors alive long before grocery stores and protein bars existed. When food became scarce, the body didn't shut down, it sharpened up. Cortisol increased focus, heightened awareness, and pushed movement. It made men restless, alert, and driven to act. That uncomfortable edge you feel isn't a malfunction. It's a signal that your nervous system has switched into hunt mode. Testosterone dips temporarily, not because it's gone, but because the body is reallocating resources. Building muscle and reproducing can wait. Finding food cannot. This is where context matters. The body doesn't yet know that this pause in eating is intentional. All it knows is that a familiar pattern has been interrupted. Once it realizes food is returning just on a different rhythm, the emergency signal begins to fade. And when cortisol clears, something far more powerful takes its place. That moment is the real turning point, and almost no one stays long enough to reach it. This is where the conversation finally changes. Most men think everything comes down to numbers, total testosterone, lab results, reference ranges. But how you feel isn't determined by how much testosterone you have, it's determined by how well your body can actually hear it. Every cell that responds to testosterone has an androgen receptor. Think of these receptors as docking stations. When testosterone binds to them, that's when you get strength, drive, clarity, and that unmistakable sense of forward momentum. But when insulin is chronically elevated from constant eating, those receptors start to dull. The signal gets noisy. It's not that testosterone disappears. It's that the message stops landing. When you create metabolic quiet through fasting, that noise drops, insulin falls, the background interference clears, and suddenly, those receptors wake up, they become sensitive again, responsive, 
Even average testosterone levels start producing outsized effects. This is why many men feel dramatically different even when their blood work barely changes. The system isn't producing more, it's using what it has more efficiently. This is the moment men describe as feeling switched on. Focus tightens, confidence stabilizes, energy stops spiking and crashing, you're no longer chasing stimulation, you're generating it internally. And while this sensitivity is returning, another powerful system quietly ramps up in the background, one that protects muscle, burns fat, and reinforces everything testosterone is trying to do. This is where fear takes over for most men. Skip meals and the first image that shows up in your mind is muscle melting off your frame. Years of gym culture drilled that idea in deep. Miss protein for a few hours and your body turns cannibal. That story sounds logical, but it's wrong. When you fast, your body doesn't panic. It prioritizes. One of the first systems to surge is growth hormone, and not by a little. Studies show increases measured in the hundreds, sometimes even thousands of percent, after extended fasting windows. Growth hormone's job is preservation. It protects lean tissue, mobilizes fat for fuel, and keeps your structure intact while calories are low. At the same time, autophagy ramps up. The word literally means self-eating, which sounds terrifying until you understand what's actually being consumed. Your body isn't burning valuable muscle. It's clearing damaged proteins, dysfunctional cells, and metabolic junk that's been accumulating for years. Think refinement, not destruction. That smaller look some men notice early on isn't muscle loss, it's glycogen depletion and inflammation dropping. Water leaves the tissue, puffiness fades, what's left is denser, harder muscle underneath. You're not shrinking, you're sharpening. And as your body cleans house and preserves what matters, another upgrade starts showing up, one that has nothing to do with the mirror and everything to do with how you think. As the body settles into this new rhythm, the change that surprises most men isn't physical. It's mental. The constant background noise starts to fade. That restless urge to check your phone, grab a snack, or chase stimulation loosens its grip. Your brain gets quiet in a way it hasn't been in years. When you fast, levels of norepinephrine and dopamine shift in a very specific direction. Not toward anxiety, toward precision. Focus narrows, distractions lose their pull. You feel alert without feeling wired. This is what many men describe as hunt mode, not aggression for the sake of it, but clarity paired with intent. There's a reason this state feels so natural. Evolution shaped the male nervous system to perform best when resources were scarce. When food wasn't guaranteed, men who became sharper, more decisive, and more driven survived. Fasting taps into that same circuitry. It restores sensitivity to dopamine instead of flooding it. In a world of constant stimulation, screens, sugar, porn, notifications, most dopamine systems are numb. Nothing feels rewarding anymore. Fasting forces a reset. Ordinary experiences start to register again. Motivation returns. You don't need to chase the next hit. You're present enough to create momentum on your own. And as your mind sharpens and your energy stabilizes, another quiet shift happens beneath the surface, one that reshapes your long-term hormonal future. Here's a piece of the puzzle almost no one talks about, even though it quietly shapes everything. Body fat isn't just stored energy. It's hormonally active tissue. And the fat that matters most isn't the kind you can pinch. It's the visceral fat wrapped around your organs, especially in the abdominal area. That fat contains an enzyme called aromatase. Aromatase converts testosterone into estrogen. The more visceral fat you carry, the more testosterone quietly leaks out of your system and gets rerouted into a hormone that works against male drive, recovery, and body composition. This isn't theory, it's chemistry. When fasting lowers insulin and forces your body to burn stored fat, aromatase activity drops. Less conversion happens. Testosterone stays testosterone. Not because you added something new, but because you stopped losing what you already had. It's like sealing a crack in a dam instead of trying to pump more water in. 
This is why fat loss through fasting feels different from fat loss through constant restriction. Hormones start working with you instead of against you. Your profile becomes cleaner, more decisive, more stable. And now, the question most men are afraid to ask finally comes into focus. If all of this is happening beneath the surface, what kind of man does this turn you into over the long run? Zoom out for a second and look at the full picture. This was never just about fasting. It was never just about testosterone, insulin, or hormones on a lab sheet. This is about trajectory. Most men drift into the same future without ever choosing it. More visceral fat, less energy, more dependence on stimulants, prescriptions, and routines that keep them functional but never powerful. They call it aging. But what it really is, is loss of metabolic control. Now contrast that with the alternative. A body that knows how to switch fuels instead of panicking, hormones that signal clearly instead of fighting through noise, a nervous system that isn't hijacked by constant dopamine hits, this is metabolic flexibility, this is hormonal resilience, this is masculine energy restored at the biological level. And here's the line that matters most. Hunger is not an emergency, it's information. When you stop reacting to it instantly, you stop being controlled by it. That discipline compounds. Self-control in the body becomes self-control everywhere else. That's sovereignty. This doesn't mean never enjoying food. Feasting matters. Connection matters. Celebration matters. But fasting is the counterbalance, the reset that keeps abundance from turning into decay. Expansion and contraction. Feast and fast. That rhythm is the foundation of a powerful life. So if this reframed how you see your body, don't ignore that signal. Sit with it. Test it. Start small. Delay your first meal tomorrow by one hour. Nothing extreme, just enough to remind your system who's in charge. You didn't come here to be entertained. You came here to remember who you are.